let's hop in now to our grand finals. We're on site delta for game number one. Spawning in the upper left hand corner, we have Onside Gaming's Solar. GSL champion looking very strong today, taking down uh, both Hero and Oliveira. His opponent in the lower right hand corner. Uh, up against some tough opponents as well. Gumiho and Cure falling to him today. It is Creator. I think Creator is maybe a bit more of a surprise to see here than Solar. But he has, like, very strong. I mean, it just felt like uh, Gumiho and Cure were really struggling against him. Some solid games. Obviously, though, this is a very different matchup. Creator hasn't played a Zerg today. Not sure how he's feeling about this one will be... Excited to see what he brings to us. This is the Grand Finals of the EPT Cup Asia. It is a solid 3.35 in the morning for me right now. Staying up late to get the good content, cast the good matches of StarCraft. Um, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Maybe hit the follow button on Twitch. I like to see those numbers goes up, go up. It gives me a good feeling. Trying to push the subscriber numbers on on uh, on YouTube up. See if I can't one day crack that 1,000 mark. Every day we get a little closer. I really appreciate that. And if you guys enjoy this kind of content and are new to the channel, I also run a weekly Korean StarCraft event. Not dissimilar from this one. The KSL. Uh, happens on, uh, what is it? It's Friday nights for me. Saturday noon Korean time. If you guys want to come check that out as well. Run it every week. Or most weeks. I should say most weeks. It's not quite as consistent as the EBT Cup. We're uh, powered by the Patreon, by the community. They're close to weekly event. We get a lot of the same players in there, though. So it's cool to see a lot of these guys twice in a week. Obviously, some of my favorite players. Some of the top players in the world. Creator opening up with a pretty quick Twilight Council here. Makes me wonder if he's planning something real cheeky. Twilight into a robo. Could this be? Could it be? Could it be? There it is. The Dankest of Shrines. I haven't seen a build like this in a while, but this feels very creator-esque. Um, this feels like a 2017 build that just hasn't really changed at all. I don't know if any of these structures have changed where this build order would be any different like i guess the warp prism would be the one unit that i think has gotten some buffs and or nerfs since legacy of the void came out uh dt's now have the ability to upgrade shadow stride but like other than that i feel like this build is pretty much exactly the same as it's been the entirety of legacy of the void so it's kind of cool to see creators still busting it out here and there Solar has great vision, though, so he should be able to spot this. Ooh, the Adepts, though. That's a cheeky move from Creator. He's got four Adepts heading across with this. The Prism was not spotted. So I don't know if Solar knows exactly what he's up against. He's not going to have detection, necessarily, because he's probably not expecting 3DTs to warp in. Starting up a couple of Spore Crawlers now, but those Spore Crawlers are not going to be ready in time for the DTs to come in. Solar has realized this issue. One DT going to start working on this. The Queen's focusing down the Prism, but it stays alive. The Adept's helping to kill that uh, Spore Crawler. Still no detection as these DTs continue to get damage done. The Prism has gotten very low, though. There is another Spore Crawler trying to come over here. Creator will see it burrow, and oh, doesn't get one of those DTs out of there. Two more DTs warping in. That prism, I think, might go down this time. 
BTs decide to back up. The base stays alive for Solar. That is very important. Let's take a look at what did die, though. Well, overall, you know what? These are good trades for Solar. The fact that he didn't lose... He really didn't lose much. 15 lings and a couple of queens there for that is, is really not bad. And now the lings on the other side of the map are going to get on top of that Nexus, force the cancel. Crater immediately takes this one, but the lings are running over here. And oh no, it's going to be another cancel. That is 200 free minerals for Solar. He's going to take this one out. There are four DTs here. I think this is still enough lings though. Oh, he doesn't want to sacrifice them. I really feel like if he had just clicked this Nexus, he would have forced the cancel. But it certainly would have cost him quite a few lings. Maybe not quite worth it. Behind this, Crater has Charge on the way. Of course, he'll have some Charge Lots and Archons. His lings are getting so much value. Now they've killed a Stalker. Uh, DTs do get in. They're going to get four more drone kills. Make that five. Before that prism gets out of there. Greater doing a great job keeping this prism alive. I thought for sure it was going to die earlier on. But it is staying alive. Greater finally going to get his third base up and running. Quite a bit later than he had wanted it to. As he was forced to cancel it a couple of times. But better late than never. And he starts up a fourth base immediately. Got a bit of a chill moment here. Solar looking for some damage with those links still. Oh, he is pumping out units though. He has hit 61 drones and he's like, that's good enough. Lings, Roaches, and Ravagers all on the way right now. His fourth base is coming up, but uh, he is not prioritizing that. Creator, what? What is? Th what is this? This is a sentry and three archons. Gonna try to hit on the left side. He's got the single archon drop to the north side. But Solar has been building nothing but units. He is way ahead in the army supply. He's gonna try to move across the map. I, this is so weird. Creator just like pokes in. He sees the fourth isn't done. I think Creator needs to get the hell out of here. Yeah, he goes for the recall. He will get all of these units out, which is massive. Warps in a couple zealots in the main base to help out with his Archon. Solar says, screw it. I'm going anyways. He's just going to hit across the map. One Immortal does get caught. It will go down. There is a shield battery here for Creator. Is that going to be enough? He overcharges it. So Biles could try to take it out. I'd love to see Solar dive forward for it. But instead, he drops the Biles and backs up. Doesn't want to commit too hard to the engagement. It looks like the Roach is on the other side of the map. Dealing with whatever was over here. I think the... Prism died as well, so the Archon, the two Zealots go down. Now Solar doesn't have to worry about it. He just gets to keep pressuring on this side of the map. Solar is down workers, but he is ahead over double the army supply of his opponent. But there are so many Immortals here. Now, now there's one less Immortal. Solar just continuing to try to find whatever value he can and kill whatever big, powerful, puffy units We've got here Archons going down, Immortals going down. There's so many Roaches and Ravagers. I don't think Creator is going to have enough. There's the GG. Solar just stopping droning and building a ton of units way before I think Creator was expecting him to. And Solar able to just take the win there. I just realized I forgot to post that I was going live in my Discord. Feels a little late now. Oh my god, look at his face. He's so cute. I'm sorry, I get distracted by my own cat. Who needs StarCraft when you can just have a cat? Right?
All right. Let's get in to game number two. We're going to hard lead. Spawning in the lower right hand corner, we've got Creator. Struggling a bit in that game one. Making some fun moves though. I love the DT opening. But his opponent just looking too strong perhaps. In the upper left it is Onside's Solar. And I mean, Solar obviously looking very, very good lately. He's known as like a king of these online cups. For a long time, a lot of the Korean pros didn't play in many online cups. Um, it just wasn't super common. But Solar would. Solar would play in the online cups and he would win a lot of them. Like back a few years ago, Solar was uh, kind of dominating in online cups, and he would actually struggle a bit more in offline competition. Obviously, that has changed, though. Solar winning GSL, which I think is kind of a massive upset. Like, if you looked at that GSL, I would not have expected Solar to take it. There were a lot of excellent players in there. Solar proven us wrong. and I mean, I, I feel like he's been pretty consistent in the last six months or so. Solar's been looking very strong. And I love to see it. Good to see him here in the finals. Oliveira took down Dark, but was not able to take down Solar. Hero has actually been crushing Dark lately. Um, I was just talking about it in the, the KSL. Hero versus Dark is the most common KSL finals. It's happened 10 times. And Hero's won nine of those. Dark has really been struggling against Hero. But not Solar, man. Solar took Hero down today. So, I don't know. He's he's just looking so good. And while Creator was playing some sick matches against both Gumiho and Cure, PVT right now is... I feel like it's at the highest level here in a very good state for Protoss. I... I don't know. I don't see Terrans winning all that often. So the, the Korean PVT is definitely favoring Protoss right now. I think a lot of the Terrans have been struggling with it lately. So I don't know if that's the best uh, indication of where Creator is at. I would love to see Creator grab a game here, though, and tie us up. Creator's an awesome player. He's an awesome player. So emotional. He, like, really... He plays with his heart. And I really appreciate that out of players. Um, can really feel it in the way he plays. Both of these guys have been around for a long time and like, I feel like they were both kind of in that same position of they, they just weren't, they wouldn't be able to win anything. You'd see them in top eights and top fours all the time. And yeah, like Solar, dominating in online cups all the time but you just never saw them getting the big wins and recently solar has stepped out got that gsl win and i don't know changed changed the na narrative for himself in a way that creator creator has not been able to creator though getting some good damage at the start of this game four kills for uh, drone kills for a couple of adepts. The Oracle comes in and a second queen pops just in time, but it's gonna be a few more kills there for that Oracle. Ling's poked the front, but Creator's got the wall up. At the end of all that harass, Creator ends up ahead 10 workers. Gotta be feeling pretty good about that as he goes to take a third. Void Ray going to be able to handle this Overlord. The Ursadak Cap watching now. One of the other maps, what is it? Uh, I don't even remember what map it is. Has the male and female Ursadaks. Got all three levels of Ursadak available to us on these maps. What map is it? Hecate? God, I'm so, I'm so bad at maps. It's crazy. Nice kill on that stasis ward. Doesn't let it even get down. 
Void Ray really going for the kill on that Overlord. Not going to get it. Solar transfuses to save it. We get to start to see some of the tech choices here as Creator gets into Blink and plus one. Crawler gets a kill on the Oracle, though. Hey, what do you guys think um, Creator's favorite music artist is? Because I'm thinking it's probably Blinkin' Park. Who do you think Creator's favorite uh, character in the Matrix is? Do you think it's the, uh, do you think maybe it's, I think it's probably the architect because he is the creator of the matrix. I got you with that one. I got you with that one. You thought it was straightforward. You thought I was just going for Oracle. Nah, dude, that one had, had levels, had layers. It was it, it had, well, it had, it had like one layer. Oh, I, guess, I guess like a second layer. Not exactly a lot, but we do what we can. It's uh, it's about 4 o'clock in the morning now, so I, I'm going to apologize, but only a little bit. This is what happens when Streamer doesn't get enough sleep and is casting StarCraft for a bunch of hours on not enough sleep. I wish I got to cast more StarCraft. I wish there was like, I don't know, man. I miss the days of getting to cast StarCraft like every single day. I, I really hope one day I'm able to get back into that. It was so much fun. <laughs> Casting StarCraft every day is just, it's just such a blessing. Hoping once uh, we get like Stormgate out, and zero space, there'll be a lot of casting work around and I can focus on just commentating. Commentating, playing, streaming the first person sometimes. It's good times. This game's been pretty passive. You know, some pressure here and there. Slings and drones going down. 13 drones have died this game. This is some good harassment from Creator. With Solar, I mean, he's still droning up. He's getting into a hive, getting into a lurker den. He's just going for going for the tech this game, not going for the overwhelming force. It'll be a little bit late for that, I think, too. Creator getting into double Colossus production. Once a few Colossi come out, it becomes really difficult to overwhelm with these kinds of units. I uh, could get into disruptors off the back of that too, and I'd love to see some rupture action. I do not know where this void ray thinks it's going, or where this warp prison thinks it's going. Creator trying to get in here with a couple things, and they're just not really getting it done. Blink stalkers coming over to poke and prob. There's no base to actually kill. Lurker upgrades on the way. We'd love to see some Vipers coming out of Solar here as well. I think those are crucial, especially against the Colossi and the Disruptors once those potentially come out. Uh, but Solar right now needs to get some units out to defend this. It looks like Creator wants to push. He's at 175 supply. He's ready to get across the map. Solar does have some Lurkers finishing up here, six of them. They're about to have their seismic spines. So this is a good timing for Solar. To start this defense, one Viper coming out. It's going to be a while before that really comes into play, though. Big counterattack of Lynx looking for something to get done here. Oh, my God. Crater just dives in. He's got a tag on all of the Lurkers. He needs to focus them down. He is getting some kills here, but a lot of Stalkers going down, too. 
So we'll get some more units across to help out. Only two workers left though. So we're trying to morph some more. Creator pushing in. He's gotta be careful though. Even with just two workers, he still has to be careful. They're killing so many of these stalkers. One more worker does go down. Uh, I think the oracles are dead though. So this is the last tag that Creator's gonna have for a while. You gotta get this observer forward so he can see what's going on. The Viper is here now, so that's gonna get a yoink gonna be a dead colossus but creator might be able to overpower this i don't know man there's only one lurker left down it goes creator keeps pushing forward three colossi still alive there are lings getting into this base but it looks like they're gonna get cleaned up can solar actually push this back he kills another colossus but more stalkers and zealots show up the zealots don't have charge creator forgot to get charged oh but a disruptor oh my god that is the most disgusting disruptor, disruptor connection I have ever seen. And Solar taps out with the W. Maybe without that, he could keep holding. I think Creator was still going to be able to push through, but that disruptor just nail in the coffin. Not even a nail in the coffin. It was like, like the coffin was there. The disruptor just like dropped an anvil through the center. Uh, he got no chance anymore. If it wasn't for sure over before, it's for sure over now. And what a great game from Creator. He ties it up. Um, and Creator once again showing that if he's able to get to that, that big late game death ball army, he's so good at engaging with it. It's so difficult to take those engagements. Um... And I think Solar, maybe just a little too slow to get into that late game tech. A little too slow to get into the Hive. If there's two Vipers there, as those first set of Lurkers burrow, I don't think Creator can push through. I think the Vipers just yoinking in Colossi into the Lurkers, so powerful. But by the time the Viper showed up, there was like two Lurkers left. And that, my friends, is not enough to win a fight against a big Protoss death ball. And so tying us up as we enter game three, in the lower left-hand corner now of Solaris, we have Creator. His opponent in the upper right-hand corner, the GSL champ, it is Onside's Solar. Uh, Creator doesn't get the block off on the hatchery. So that was an early hatch there from Solar. So he really wants to get that natural. Doesn't want to be stuck dealing with the, uh, the third base as his second base. Usually if I see, um, like, dark force the natural base he, a lot of times he likes to go for a big attack off of that he's got like a very specific plan i think for solar he just doesn't want to have to deal with the uh the separation of his bases Oh man, the sleepy times. Sleepy times are imminent here for me. I'm starting to feel the tired. Sorry guys if I, uh, <clears throat> not filling time in a particularly entertaining way. While we wait for things to, uh, really kick off here. Yeah, I have a, I have a strategy for that. Here we go. My strategy for struggling to fill time is to just put the cat on the screen there you go now you guys can look at cute cat instead of me having to talk about things <clears throat> it's 
Stargate here for Creator. So no DT opening. Clearly the Stargate opening worked better for him last game. Oh, it was kind of funny he opened with the DTs, but uh, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of Archon drop action happening. He did a little bit. But I think it was just the one Archon drop in that game one. Maybe Solar's just too good at defending the double Archon drop. Adept sneaking in, getting three kills before getting taken down. Not the best trades there for Creator. Third base finishing up for Solar. See if the Oracle can get some damage done. All the Lings run across to try to maybe stop a third base from coming up for Creator. Yep, Oracle once again gets three kills, gets out of there. Whew, just barely. Third base for creator. Macro time. Both these players pretty macro focused. Creator does have some uh, some cheeky builds he throws out from time to time. But I feel like in general, we expect macro play. Again, he's been looking so solid in those late game engagements. Not too surprised to see creator. Probably just trying to get there again, right? Um, Solar as well. Tends to be very macro focused. Doesn't like to do a lot of cheesing or aggressive builds. He does have some. And actually game one, we saw him get pretty aggressive on a pretty low drone count. But even that was macro focused for the first uh, few minutes of the game. Six more drones go down there. Oracles get out. No problemo. All right, things are spicing up. We'll say goodbye to the kitty for now. We actually do a channel points reward for turning the cat cam on. You get like 30 seconds of cat cam for 5,000 points. <laughs> that is a blink opening again from Creator. So Creator seems to be like, all right, last game worked. Let's just keep going with that. Keep on with what was successful. And so now Solar's gotta figure out what to do about this. He keeps losing drones. 17 drones have died this game. Creator hasn't lost anything since those first two adepts. So this is already a fantastic opening to this game from Creator. Who's continuing to be annoying with these oracles around. He's got three of them. Solar's just getting into roaches. He's got roach speed on the way, no problem. Needs to get that drone count up. Feel like 64 just ain't enough as he gets into the infestation pit and his plus one missile attacks. But Creator just feels feels like he's in a good spot here. I'm not sure what Solar's plan is. I'm assuming with the infestation pit he's gonna be heading towards Hive again, trying to get into lurkers. I think quicker is better as far as that goes. Um I don't know, I guess Dark hasn't had the most success against Protoss lately, but Dark generally likes to get his Hive a little bit earlier than everybody else. And it can be really powerful to get those high-tech units out and uh, be able to take cost-efficient trades when your opponents maybe aren't quite expecting it yet or don't have all the tools to fight against it yet. Solar does start that Hive up, getting some Roaches and Ravagers out. Creators into the double robo, double Colossus production. These Colossi were very useful in the last game. Um, maybe not quite as useful as that disruptor at the very end, though. Whew. That bad boy had 12 kills. 
and I could be wrong, but I think it was all from the one shot, which is an insane amount of damage. Creator getting a little cheeky here, gonna get a couple of zealots into the main base, kind of poking with the stalkers in the middle of the map, keeping the army distracted. It's literally just two zealots, not the end of the world here. But Creator just pulling this army back. Looks like something else might have been hitting in here. Oh, these stalkers gotta be careful, Creator. Trying to get out of there. Creator's actually trying to go for a push on the bottom side here. And a lot of Solar's army is out of position to deal with this. He's gonna hit that creep. Solar's gonna have to pull everything back take this fight. Vipers are on the way. It's not quick to Lurkers this time for Solar. And Creator is hitting a lot earlier. Just trying to put that pressure on. Big counterattack. A lot of Lings getting on top of a ton of Stalkers here that are trying to reinforce. What are these Stalkers doing, man? They are not going to be able to get over here. Creator pops the Guardian Shield. He's going to go up. Banelings are being more Bane speed. is about to finish. Can the Banelings get some connections here? A few of them getting jumped on early. Some force fields going down. Oh, those are beautiful force fields. The stalkers blink back. Get out of the way of those biles. The colossi pull back. Oracle's even helping out. Vipers are here. Can they get some good yoinks on the colossi? There goes one, and there goes two. And without those colossi, this army is feeling very weak. It's just a handful of stalkers. And while creators started off that fight so nicely, Solar finishes it up beautifully. Oracles pop a, uh, a Ravager on the way out. Creator needs to back up. He needs to get his army together. Oh, he's building. Okay, cancel the War Prism. I was going to say, he's building another War Prism. He doesn't need that. He needs Colossi. He needs Disruptors. He needs that AoE. Solar taking a great fight. I feel like I called it, man. They, the Vipers came out and the fight just was over. Solar's up to 84 workers now across five different bases. Economy is looking fantastic. About to finish up plus one melee as well. That's going to help the Lings and Banes a little bit against this army. Creator is very heavy on Blink Stalkers. We should be able to get some snipes maybe on the uh, on the Vipers here. They're going to have to be careful. But Blink Stalkers in general aren't the most powerful army. So it's a lot of army supply for Creator in units that just, uh, yeah, they're, they're all right. They're very good. They're some of the best units in the game, but in those big army fights that Creator's been so good at, the Blink Stalkers can struggle a little bit. Stasis Trap catching a bunch of units here. Solar doesn't seem to care. He is just going to keep on pushing. He wants to stop this fifth base from coming up. Looks like Creator's going to hold on for now. Got those extra Colossi out. Uh, is it just the two? Three? Got three Colossi. Adrenal on the way for Solar. He's got plus two melee coming up as well. Raider not really building anything right now. Oh, Colossi getting yoinked. Two of them go down immediately. Banelings looking to smash onto the Stalkers. The Stalkers blink backwards. Good movement there from Creator. He's going to save his base once again. Solar's going to be forced to pull back. Creator actually taking the army supply lead at the back of that. Looks like Solar losing a lot just to get basically two Colossi. And the Stalker army, man. There are 41 Blink Stalkers in this game for Creator right now. And I was talking crap about them, but man, they are good units. The Banelings going to smash forward. We'll get on top of some of this, but they're not as good as, against Stalkers as they once were. And Solar is struggling now. He's going to lose that base. He's still on four, but now it's four bases to four. Creator still has a ton of Blink Stalkers here. Poking down some units, getting what value he can. He's taking great trades so far. 3,000 resources in favor of the Protoss, which is important because Solar has been mining quite a bit more for the last few minutes here. Ling's going to try to get in. Oh, Creator with the warp in, but it's a little bit late. And the shield battery is going to get jumped on. A few more Stalkers warping in because, of course, Solar just, or uh, Creator just wants more Stalkers. Solar moves in over here, but that actually works out really poorly for him. And now he's getting 
himself caught between a rock and a hard place. Stalkers try to blink forward to get a Viper. They can't quite do it. I think the links were cleaned up. Double Colossus again in production here for Creator. He wants to beef those numbers up. But Solar, he's gone into a different tech this time. He's gone into the Ultras. Ultras against Stalkers is kind of interesting. Um, if there's just a handful of Stalkers, the Ultras can be quite good against them. But this many Stalkers? Stalkers do bonus against armor, guys. Like, this many Stalkers, I think you can, like, two-shot Ultras. It's actually insane. Solar's new fifth base finally finishing up. He's kept the worker lead by quite a bit, but he's been mining pretty poorly for a while. He needs to get that base up. Fifth base on the way now for Creator. As Creator tries to harass with some Stalkers, it looks like Solar is pretty nearby, though. Oh, those roaches getting caught. Creator going to get quite a few roach kills for free here. Solar needs to get his army in the correct positions. The Stalkers want to blink up into the main base. And they will blink up into the main base. They're going to go for the Ultra Cavern. I don't think they're going to get the Ultra Cavern, though. Uh, because Solar is here. Wait. Oh, man. Stalkers are so good. How did they kill that? That got double transfused and down it went. No anabolic synthesis for these bad boys. Looks like the army on the other side of hope on the map though not going in so creator getting some damage done on one side but not getting it done on both so we're gonna push him away and solar gonna try to go for a push here get on top of this oh the stasis trap oh it doesn't catch ultras yeah that's important stuff to know <laughs> forgot about that solar trying to blast his way forward here Getting some Banelings onto the probe line. Five probes going down. Ultras fighting against Stalkers. Uh, a bit disjointed here for Creator. But Solar starting to dwindle in these uh, these big hefty units. More Banelings coming in. 16 probes now going down. A lot of that army supply for Solar is getting killed though. His new Ultra Cavern is up so he can build Ultras once again. He's got five more on the way. Creator, I would love to see him pump out double Immortal here. He's got a couple of Immortals coming out. They have to be so careful, though. There's Lings running around all over the place. Solar's actually just clicked this Nexus. He wants to get the kill, and he will finally kill it after trying a few times. Creator counter-pushing, though. Getting on top of the Banelings before they are able to morph. Oh, there's no static defense at this base. And Solar is just going to kill a bunch of probes. He might be able to just kill the base. Creator moving on the other side of the map. His army is so strong together, but is it strong enough? The Blinding Cloud, that is such a sick move against this Death Ball army. And with some hot pickups, Creator is staying alive, but I don't think he's going to be able to hold out for long. The vials connecting. This army just has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Solar closes it out and takes game number three. Going up 2-1 in this series. Some sick moves there. I love the choice to go into ultras. And I think Creator's army being so spread out and disjointed in different pieces ended up really backfiring for him because Solar just grouped everything and went for one base and then there was kind of a weird fight going on but i think by that point solar had already killed enough of the army creator has had a tough time getting back into it and now we're heading to match point for solar We'll see if uh, Creator can bring us to a game five or if Solar can close it out here. I'm at a crossroads on what I want to happen because I pretty much always want a game five. You know, I want those long series. I want the juicy series. Uh, but I'm sleepy. And, you know, that's a struggle the struggle sleepy also my throat kind of hurts
All right, uh, we're heading to Hecate. As soon as our players are ready, should just be a moment here. And there we go. There we go as we start the countdown. Load in the game number four. See if Solar can close it out. He's looked pretty solid, but I don't know. Even in that game, even in that last game, it felt like Creator was making some really good moves. And um, ah, this is feeling this is feeling a lot different than I had expected it to. This match, it's kind of it's kind of cool, but it feels like these players are playing in a way that it it makes it makes them feel a little sloppy. You know, which it usually just means the players are very closely matched and they're like really pushing against each other. Well, here we are in game four, spawning in the lower left hand corner of Hecate down one to two. Got to win the next two in a row. It is creator. His opponent in the upper right hand corner is on match point. He's got to close it out here. It's onside gaming's solar. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I expected. Um, I guess it's not too dissimilar from what I was expecting to see. It's just kind of funny after watching. I've I've cast Hero versus Dark so, so many times in the past year. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Because not only do they play in KSL all the time, I've cast them in EPT Cups in Korea and in Asia or <laughs> and in Americas. So many times I've cast those guys against each other or against other other players, you know, Hero versus Solar or even like Dark versus Creator or Dark versus some other Protoss's classic. But it just it just feels like I'm so used to seeing Hero and Dark that I kind of forget what other PVZs look like. That, you know, we might not just have a player go for Oracle and Adept Harass at the start of a game into a bunch of blink stalkers to like all in his opponent, which is basically what hero has been doing. And then dark, like darks all over the place. He's got proxy hatches. He'll go for three base roach all ins or six minute hives, you know, like who knows, who knows what dark's going to do. I don't even think dark knows what dark's going to do sometimes. But Solar and Creator are definitely playing very differently here. Solar, generally, somebody I consider very, very macro-focused. Some of the more prepared stuff, like GSLs and whatnot, you might see him go for some timing builds and some cheeses. But I feel like, in general, in these online open cups, much more likely to see Solar play pretty straightforward macro games. Um, and, yeah, same for Creator, really. Like... Harassment-based openers, maybe try something cheeky with the DTs like in game one where you might be able to get a, a sneaky kill off of it. But even that was still pretty macro-focused, right? Like DT drop into Archon drop. That used to just be like a macro build, and that's what it was. So... Just some uh, some passive harassment focused macro play is what we've been seeing. And it's kind of what I expect to see in this game too, as Creator opens with another Stargate. Solar seems to have found the tech that's working for him against the, uh, the Blink Stalker Colossus. Going for those Ultras last game. Ultra Ling Bane Roach Ravager. What a combo. Worked a little better than the Lurker Roach Ravager, um, which I think would have worked just fine if he had been able to get those Vipers out. Again, we saw how useful the Vipers were in the last game, I think game one. Had the potential to look like that. 
but Solar just wasn't quite quick enough to those Vipers. The thing is, they'll, they pop with so little energy, you've got to suck up some juice from a hatchery or something before they're particularly useful, so it takes a little while for them to really kick in. They're so good when they do. Especially, uh, they're so good against the style creator's been going for, right? Where you have Blink Stalker, Colossus. There weren't any High Templar around for storms or feedback. Creator was focused on using the Colossi and the Disruptors for AoE. And, uh, I mean, the if you have four Colossi and two of them get pulled in, pretty powerful. Pretty powerful stuff. But Creator is going to try to get some harassment done. It looks like he's got three Adepts and two Oracles here. Feels like he wants to try to get something done. See if he can do it. Five Adepts even, man. Get some Adept harassment. Creator going for a Robo, a Fort, and a Twilight Council as his third base finishes up. Oh my god, that's a lot of, that's like seven Adepts. That's eight Adepts. This is a lot of pressure coming out here. Lings getting on top of this, more Lings coming out. A few drones starting to go down. Where are the Oracles? They're being super useful over here. Just three drones so far. Creator's gonna go for the recall. Try to get those Adepts out of there. And little bits of damage. A lot of Lings are coming out of Solar right now. As the Oracles find the empty drone line, or the, the uh, defenseless drone line, I should say. It's a couple more drones. Links go across the map, but they're going to run into the Adepts that got recalled home, as well as another Oracle. But they'll just have to back up. Oh, here's male Ursadak. We've got female Ursadak over here somewhere. Is there an Ursadak cub on this map? The Ursadak calf? I don't think there is. I don't think I've seen one. I feel like there should be. Maybe one should spawn after a little while. Once the male Ursadak and the female Ursadak get to know each other a little bit, you know? Spend some time together. Well, Solar made a lot of lings and they haven't really done anything. Which is a, always a bit unfortunate for the Zerg. When you make units, you usually want them to, to, to get something done. Um, I guess he's been keeping an eye on his opponent's scouting. What is this? Phoenix is coming out. Was there a Spire that I missed? There's not. Something was just canceled, though. Maybe there was a Spire on the way that I didn't see, but Creator saw. He sees that it's not there anymore. Continuing to build Phoenixes, though, I wonder if Creator was guessing there was a Spire, but didn't necessarily know. He's just going to have a bunch of Phoenixes out. Uh, for, like, no reason. out a little bit here. Solar, though, ready to take a fight. Going to be able to trim off one of those Archons. Some force fields go down. Keep the rest of this safe. Creator trying to get into Storm, but he does not have Storm available just yet. Those are going to be an Archon. Solar trying to push. He's going for it, man. He's got 28 more Lings on the way. There are Queens walking across the map. I didn't realize how uh, committed he was going to be to this. The Oracle's try to trim off a couple of roaches. Creep spread is very far forward. A big baneling morph. Raider has to be ready for this. I'd love to see some stasis traps go down up on the high ground here. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on to this fourth base on the low ground. Does have a shield battery. Nexus is finishing up. He can overcharge it. Couple of Ravagers to pop force fields if those go down. Creator just pulling back though. Yeah, I think he has to sacrifice this. Baneling speed finishing up and these Phoenixes are coming back. Looks like they got some uh, drone kills on the other side of the map or no, maybe it was the Zealots actually that are getting on top of this base. I think they'll be able to kill this base. They are clicked on it. That's about all they'll get done. Phoenixes chase this home. Solar deciding not to uh, 
keep committing across the map as he loses that base. But he's going to retake it. Down to 73 workers. Creator trying to take a new fourth base gets scouted immediately. And will be forced to cancel here as the Link get on top of it. And then Solar bringing everything back over up to the high ground. Ooh, got to be careful of that. Stasis trap gets a few roaches caught. Miles going down, breaking force field. Solar decides not to keep trying to bust in. He's lost a lot of units there, and he's going to lose a lot on the retreat as well. Prism, though, pads over some Zerg queens, I should say. Raider pushes out and then pulls back. He really needs a fourth base. He'll go kill that Ling, retake this base. Solar's. Fifth is about to pop back up. A few seconds here. Uh, still only on 72 workers. Wouldn't hate to see him pop out a few more drones as this finishes up. But I think he could probably uh, Maynard some over pretty soon from one of these bases. Gonna try to get on top of this again. Storm is done now. These links have to be careful. He's gonna force a cancel on the base. Oh my god, the Bane links from the north side. Coming in. And getting some big kills at the same time. It looks like some Banes must have hit this probe line. As 13 probes go down and Creator losing the fourth base again. 13 probes going down. Takes a big hit on the army too. And it feels like Solar is just trying to badger him down. He's just trying to wear him down over time. Solar has not taken good trades. My god, that is bad. But at the end of the day... It might just not matter. Ling's Bane's getting in, forcing another cancel on another base. That is one dead Nexus, but I think that's the third cancel. Pretty painful. Uh, make that a fourth cancel. As Crater just tried to double expand and Solar completely stopped it on both fronts. Baneling's trying to come in. Some storms go down, but the Banelings do connect on the High Templar. Oh, and now the Lings are going to get surrounds. And those are just some dead units. Solar getting great damage done here. Creator does push this back. He is on eight Immortals on this side of the army. But there's Hydras coming out now. Hydras do a lot better against the Immortals than the Roaches do. This, this Immortal is trying its best to stay alive. Take some damage. Let's see if Solar can clean this army up. There's no splash damage in this army. Wait, I lied. There are some storms. But I think the Roach and the Ravagers might be too much. Oh, another storm. All right, Creator's got a little bit more juice here than I had expected. It looks like the Lings are cleaned up back at home, so Creator can focus his uh, uh, attention on the attack now. As he pushes up this ramp with all 10 Immortals, they get hit with, with some Biles here. So always got to get everything in range. Where are the Lings? Some Lings on the backside, drawing some of this Immortal fire. Is there enough here for Solar? The Phoenix is trying to lift up some of the Ravagers. Biles connecting on the Immortals. And I think Creator is running out of steam here as the Biles connect on the Prism. The Prism finally goes down. And that is going to be GG as Solar closes out the game on Hecate. Closes out the series. Takes that best of five. The Grand Finals. And Solar is your EPT Cup Asia champion for the day. GG.